Um, you know, first we're going to check out the CT30, kind of get a feel for what this used to look like. You want to go ahead and open it with the side latch right there. And there's the adapter plate there. You can tell it goes, looks like as low as 6 to a little over 20. And it holds the 250 and the 900 micron. There are both two grooves there for both of them. Now on the new one, it opens up a little different there. And as you can tell, it looks pretty close to the same. There's This is the part number AD10, and it does the 250 and the 900 micron size. And the measuring chart's pretty much the same, just numbered a little bit more, a little bit bigger. And it looks like the old adapter pan, the adapter panel is AD-30A. So, new one AD-10. And let's see what else is going on here. Okay. So here's a look at the old one. There's the roller right there, as you can tell. And as when you press in the, to prep the blade for cleaving, as you can tell, that's how the old one rolled up right there. See the room right there for your glass? Then when you press down it would go ahead and swing the blade and your glass would then uh, roll with the gears internally of this cleaver into the scrap collector there. So that's the old one. That's how that worked. And let's go ahead and check out the scrap from the old one just so you guys can go ahead and remember what that looked like. And the old one has some brushes right there. You can go ahead and rotate them to push the uh, cleaved the little piece of glass into the case there. Okay, so that was the old one. And this is how you take off the scrap collector. They're pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Let's put that back on. Now with the CT50, the new one things you'll notice is when you um, let's take a look here. When you prep the blade in place, the roller gets picked up along with it. And now you have a lot of room there for the for your extra glass when you measure it, when you put it to the appropriate mark. You have that extra room to go into the scrap collector. Now that's a small little detail that people might not think is a big deal, but you know, when I've done this out in the field to help out customers learn fiber, as you can tell the difference, that's a small little area. The CT50 has a large area, and that really makes it really nice when you, because you, you want to cleave a nice long piece. You're not going to measure that all the time once you get used to it. And it's nice to have that long piece just dump in there, because the other one is a little too long. You'd have to, it, it's just one of them small little things that would cause you a little bit of grief. Not a big deal. But I think if you do a lot of fibers, it'll make a big difference. So that's how the scrap collector comes off. So you'll really like that. And this is how it opens. So the scrap collector a little smaller, but then again, the fiber that falls in there is really small, so not a big deal. You can go ahead and pop it back in place just like that. So that's how the old one opened up, little side latch there. Now the new one here opens up right here in the front, a little bit, a uh, little bit more convenient. Pops open just like that. Okay, and there they are side by side. Another thing I want to mention is, as you can tell, that's as high as the previous one would open up. The CT50, as you can tell, when they're sitting next to one another, they look to be about the same height. But with the CT50, you can really open it up. You got some more room. And I really like that because when you go to cleave and when you go to clean, uh, you got a lot of small little parts in there when you start using this a lot. You got a lot of room. You can really see visually in there and you can get to cleaning very conveniently. So it's really amazing how a really small speck of something, a really tiny something can make a difference when you're trying to do this, when you're trying to terminate fiber. So it's pretty nice. I like how it opens up and you can keep it nice and clean, swab it. And the previous one, that's how big it, that's how much it opened up. And up there sometimes you get some small pieces 
and uh, it's just more convenient. I really like how this one opens up like that. Okay. Now on the bottom, let's take a look here. Where am I at? Now this is how you would raise the blade on the previous one. You would put your little Allen wrench in there, turn it once to raise it once, turn it again to raise it again. But on the new one, there is a knob on the front here, which makes it a, a bit more convenient. There it is. And keep in mind, you only want to raise, when you first get this cleaver, you don't want to, if you start having issues cleaving, that's a whole other story. Go to the YouTube channel for more troubleshooting on that. But it's not going to be the, the, the height of the blade when you first get this. So it's set on low, goes to medium, then it goes to high. But keep in mind, this cleaves quite a bit. Um, and on the new one there, there's the bottom. That's You can rotate the blade by just turning the knob on the bottom also. Rotate the blade from one to two next position there. We'll get into that here in a little bit. One thing I did want to mention was this does have take double A battery, triple A batteries. I'm sorry about that. For the Bluetooth capability. And before I forget, the new CT50 cleaver does 60,000 fiber cleaves. Now there's the blade numbering that I mentioned right there. There's a good look at it. Where on the bottom, that knob, you can go ahead and rotate it from one to two to three and so forth. So Here's the Bluetooth setup. You can also rotate the blade by pressing the button there. Now when that battery light turns red, that means your batteries are less than 10% and you're going to want to replace those. Just a heads up. Now you're going to want to download the Splice Plus app and you can go ahead and connect your cleaver to your phone. Might think not a big deal but there's actually some cool features here when you go ahead and connect the cleaver to your phone now keep in mind this is it, it, something else we'll get into this cleaver is designed to go hand in hand with a fusion splicer so we'll talk about that a little bit later there we go we just connected the two and when you start playing with the app, there's a few details in here. There's a couple little, uh, there's a handful of things in here that makes it pretty cool. We'll get to those in just a minute. You can go ahead and call your distributor if you have any questions once you have their information. Email, that sort of thing. What else is going on in here? Okay, mail settings, saved history. We already got into that. Contact distributor. Uh, what else? What else? Um... Data. Okay, so I haven't saved anything. I just installed this. I was playing with it earlier, so let's go ahead and here we go. So one of the things you'll notice, you can go ahead and adjust the blade from your phone. And, you know, you can do it manually too, but on your phone, it lets you know the what position you're on. You can go ahead and save a log of this. What blade position, number one, number two, number five, and you keep a log of how many cleaves you actually did with uh, with this app here. There you go. So a nice little extra if you want to go ahead and keep an eye on your blade, your blade life, see how much you get out of every um, every number where it's at. Uh, blade unit needs to be in advanced position. Let's go ahead and do that. Click OK. Here we go. All right, so it's in the advanced position now, right there. And now it's on number 12. Let me go ahead and adjust the cleaver here a little bit for you. There we go. And it'll move it to the next position. Now the previous cleaver, the CT30, that was only good for 40, let's take a look here, 48,000 blades. So with this cleaver, you can get some more cleaves. And as I mentioned, this cleaver was designed, if you're gonna get into fusion splicing, you're gonna wanna get a fusion splicer with uh, the kit with this particular unit, the CT50. They go hand in hand, we'll get into that here in a little bit. As you can tell, you can go ahead and rotate the blade right there by pressing the button. 
There we go. And if battery takes a crap and you need to rotate the blade, you can go ahead and do that on the bottom. Okay. There's a good look at numbering right there that we checked out earlier.